What's going on, everyone? Yes, today is another tour review, and yes, the man that stands in front of you is a hunter from the video game Bloodborne. Now, this game is pretty much one of the installments from the Soul series, and it is a standalone game as of now. But if you never played Demon Souls or Dark Souls, then Bloodborne is probably another title that you probably haven't even quite picked up. Pretty much everybody that picked up this game is probably fans of the other games that came out. But beyond all that, this is the very first installment of a Soul Series character, pretty much. Uh, so instead of them going to Demon Souls or going to Dark Souls, they decided to make their first figure come out of Bloodborne, which was actually a really damn nice pick due to all the detail work that's on them. Uh, and I'll be showing that to you very closely. We'll be going over that. And I also have a Dark Souls character dropping as well. One of the uh, Black Knights or Dark Knights, rather. That's from Dark Souls, so can't wait to see how that's going to look as well. Uh, this is made by Figma. This is a consider a six inch figure. Um, sometime with Figma, they can be shorter or taller, and I'll show you an example of that. So let's go ahead first and jump into detail, then I'll show you size. So as for detail, you can see for yourself, this figure is loaded full of details. Nice chain going on here. Got some hints of gold and silver in there. The buckles is nicely crafted. Jacket has some nice texture on it. His hat looks worn on the edges. They really nailed the look of this character from the video game. Like I said, nicely done. Real clean paint. Look at that gauntlet. Really well done. Inside is more simple, but still nicely done. Same thing going in on this side. Nicely crafted there. Really nicely done. His boots have that same attention to details. This actually supposed to be one of Figma's very first like really heavy on detail figures uh it was stated when they actually decided to release this figure that they were going to go pretty much all out when it came down to just overall looking at fine detail and work on a figure and you can definitely see that was expressed very much so on this figure so really really nicely done now as for the hunter let me show you a quick height comparison real quick So, what I mean by you can get a variety of different size Figmas. This is a Figma Levy or Levi from Attack on Titan. You can see that he gets towered quite a bit by the Hunter. Uh, I actually thought the Hunter was at least the size of Guts from Berserk. Uh, he's still shorter than Berserk. Berserk still is probably one of the biggest uh, Figma figures. Next, I think, a uh, Metroid figure. But you can see how much shoulder height that good old guts have over the hunter and then as for kind of another brand this is a dc designer from greg capullo series and you can see how big one of those figures so that's initially about the height of any um marvel legends figure things of that nature in the states or NECA figure so that's pretty much the height there so figmas are pretty tiny but what you're mainly paying for is uh, amount of articulation that you're getting out of it and the amount of detail and just that import aspect. Uh, and some Figmas, some Figmas actually get a little bit more than others when it comes to accessories. In this case, dealing with the good old Hunter here, your main money in eye candy is really just eye candy, to be honest with you. Uh, when it comes to accessories, he comes extremely light. So as for accessories, you're going to get... One of the transformation weapons. And it's really well crafted. You can see like some ingrained stuff going on behind the wrappings. The handle is pretty basic. Nothing too, too crazy. But you can see 
the gears on it. You can even see like the little notches because a transformation weapon goes from this to that. So I did a really, really nice job. All right, and you're gonna also receive his pistol as well. And this is really well crafted. Look at the detail on that. Really great work. You're gonna get a total of 10 hands. So it's practically five set of hands you got going on. You have fisticuffs, relax. This is a loose grip for the transformation melee weapon. And this is a tight grip. And then obviously the pistol hand goes for right and left. So you got that. You're going to get one extra wrist peg just in case if you break one and the standard Figma stand. As for articulation dealing with this hunter here, his head is on a hinge. So he can look down about that far. About this far up, which is not much due to the collar. Left and right obviously can be turned there. His head is on a ball, where well, his neck is on a ball joint. Mine has a tendency to come off. Um, it's not a problem, but obviously it can come off. He has a free floating scarf here, so that kind of prevents the hinder aspect. Uh, as for tilting the head, you can get a little bit in there. The head will probably be on this verge of popping off when you're doing that, though. You're going to get a ball joint going into the shoulder, and then it's going into a hinge. So you got a little bit of motion rocking back and forth. You can go all the way out like so. You can even spin in the shoulder because it doesn't have no type of bicep swivel. So all the swivels happen up here or in the elbow itself, which is also on the ball joint. Uh, this, I don't really care for this uh, design just because it feels pretty loose. Um, so that's one thing. I kind of wish they just go back to the old ways of having a long stem going into the arm itself versus this ball joint stuff. Uh, but you do get a single hinge. Pretty basic bend. You're going to get hinge on the wrist, which is really nice, actually. It's not that bad. Going up is kind of problematic, but going down is ease. Rotation, obviously. This is kind of free-flowing in a way. You got an ab crunch, which is taking you forward quite a bit. Going back, you can go quite a bit back as well. You can do some nice tilts, so that's not a problem. Rotation, obviously, and then you have your waist. If you add all that together, you get a nice lean over as well. These are on hinges back here, part of his jacket, so you can actually pose that to your liking. His legs are on ball joints, so you can kind of move that without a problem. Not too much hindering going to go on due to the fact that the crotch is a soft PVC. Uh, rotation at the thigh, just depending on what you're doing, maybe a little bit rough than uh, others when you're actually moving them. Uh, he can do about this far splits. Not crazy, but it's still nice to get the poses you need. Ah, uh, see that just popped off. So you got that going. Pop that right back on. You got a single hinge knee. This can rotate a little bit. This is on a ball joint on the ankle itself. So full spin can rock forward and back. And the cool part is even though you see me moving it quite a bit, you still have a hinge attached. So it can still go a little bit far forward and it can go more down. So you can actually move it, maneuver this to your liking to kind of get a better range. Uh, further as pivot, pivot kind of sucks on here, I won't lie. Uh, even if you try to move the joint itself, like shift the joint that's part that's in the shoe, can be problematic but it can be done and you have a toe hinge so that is all that you're getting out of the good old hunter so i would say if you like bloodborne definitely pick them up hopefully this review helped out hopefully you like what you see uh if you got any questions feel free to ask me and uh, please hit like and also subscribe y'all take care